my name is Alvaro Augusto Sales, and um, uh, I am an electrical engineer, and I am a professor at the university in south of Brazil, in Porto Alegre, and that's the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. The name of the state is Rio Grande do Sul, and Porto Alegre is the capital of Rio Grande do Sul. And uh, there I work in the electrical engineering department. And since uh, several years, we have been uh, studying the subjects uh, related uh, to uh, wireless communications, such as uh, cell phone systems, the towers, the uh, base stations, the mobile phone, and uh, what we do in the electrical engineering department, we do simulations of those emissions, say for the cell towers, the base stations, you are in the far field. People are in the far field. We can simulate that and we compare the results with the standards, the recommendations. And we do this also for the mobile phone. We do the simulations when the mobile phone is approaching to the head and when you speak it with it very close to your head. So therefore, we simulate the brain and the other tissues in, you, in the head of adults and of children, okay? And uh, out of these simulations, the end of that is uh, the SAR, specific absorption ratio, in every part of uh, the head. And uh, after that, you are able to compare the SAR obtained with the, the uh, international recommendations, such as the recommendation in this country, um, 1.6 watts per kilogram, and uh, the recommendation, uh, the international recommendation from a, com an, a commission we call ICNIRP, ICNIRP, which is two watts per kilogram. So we do those simulations, we compare with the regulations, and also we try to improve the performance, the performance of the cell phones. We design new antennas to shape the beam to the opposite side of the head. You don't want electromagnetic energy being absorbed in the user's head. Therefore, new antennas, directional antennas we call, the beam is shaped away from the head, and therefore uh, what you have as improvement with these new antennas, you have um, more energy going to the nearest base station, so you improve the quality of the communication. You save battery because the cell phone will operate at lower levels. You save the battery, you have more uh, f uh, time f f to use that battery. You, you uh, reduce the energy consumption of the battery. And last but not least, <laughs> yeah. and you reduce the risk for the users when the antenna is directing the energy opposite to the user's head. So that's some of the work we do there. This is not a, a new solution. They know the solution and many manufacturers, they have, they have patent, patents, patents. patents for these um, we, we call planar antennas and this used technologies very well known, such as microstrip and other technologies, they are established. And they have the, the pa patents, but uh, 
when you ask them why do they do not use this new type of antennas um, they do not ans they do not have a, a reasonable answer to this question and some uh, people say that they do not use these antennas because they would have to explain why they are not using the previous antennas. Mm -hmm. But they could make more by more money by saying, "Oh, look, we just developed a newer, better, safer model." Yeah, this is. I do agree with you, but they will have to say that. I have already said to them uh, in private conversation and also in conferences where they were there and even in some hearings in Brazilian um, Chamber of Deputies. I said this to, to them, but they, they didn't uh, do that until now. Um, do you have uh, manufacturers in your country, Brazilian cell phone manufacturers? No, all are the international companies such as Nokia, Motorola, Samsung and others. Mm -hmm. But they have, I know they have the patents. I know, yeah, because I tried to put, uh, to apply for a patent for these antennas. And the answer we had is that these antennas have been already patented and they gave the name of the several types of antennas. But this, you understand, is like um, a, a light from a car. The light from a car is directed like a beam. Okay. The usual antenna normally being used in cell phones are non-directional antennas. So they are like, uh, if it were this, emitting symmetrically around it. So when these antennas in the cell phone, you don't see it, but they are there. When these antennas are approaching to your head, the emitted pattern changes. Instead of being a circle around the antenna, it will be more concentrated in the head. Why? Because the head has got some electrical parameters higher than they are, such as the dielectric constant. It's uh, around 70 to 80 times higher than they are. So this parameter means that the energy, electromagnetic energy, is much more concentrated in those tissues. So instead of having a circular beam, circular pattern, around the, that those antennas, it will be an ellipse, concentrating more energy in your brain. When you make the simulations, if uh, these cell phones are around two centimeters from your head, um, um, about 50% of the energy is dissipated in your head. In the normal position of uh, operation, when the uh, cell phone is held on your head, more than 70% of the energy is being dissipated in your brain. So it's not only the case of um, um, reduce the risk for the person, it's also a subject of uh, uh, energy consumption. You are uh, wasting energy for a, uh, a purpose you do not want. Obviously, obviously, the worst part of the question is the risk, but 
even if you take off the risk, you are doing a bad engineering solution. Therefore, if you use a directional antenna shaping the beam opposite to the head, you are saving energy, you are improving the quality of the communication, you are reducing the battery drain, and you are reducing the risk. So it's obvious, it's a reasonable solution. So your question, why do they do not use this sort of antennas? Everybody puts this question. I don't know. Uh, they should answer this question. They, the, the industry.